Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Richard. I'm an account executive here at AEC Software. And I'm going to be your presenter today um, for our webcast on Fast Track Schedule 10 uh, for the Windows platform. Uh, now, the walkthrough that we're going to go through today is actually going to be split up into three different parts. At the very beginning, I'm going to talk about um, just a little bit about AEC software um, and Fast Track Schedule in general. Then we're going to go through some, the three main views of Fast Track the schedule view, the calendar view, and the resource view. Uh, then the second part, we're going to flip to a blank schedule, uh, work through some of the fundamentals of building out a schedule from scratch. And then the third part, we're actually going to go through some of the reporting features in Fast Track, including layouts, filters, and consolidation. Uh, before we jump right into the program, I just want to say a couple things about AEC software in general. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with AEC software, AEC has been building project management solutions for almost 25 years now. And we're actually on the 10th version of Fast Track schedule. Uh, we are widely regarded as the top-ranked cross-platform project management application on the market today. Uh, we have quite a large market share on the PC side, as well as more Mac users than any other project management tool. Now, hopefully the first thing you'll notice about Fast Track as we go through it today and as you work through it on your own uh, is that the program is very intuitive. Um, we built it out so that um, anyone from a new project manager uh, to the most veteran project manager can jump right into the program, um, kind of learn the fundamentals, um, right away and then learn the more advanced features on the go. Um, like any other program, it's going to have a learning curve. We like to think it's pretty small, um, so you're not going to have to learn, uh, take a long time to learn the basics right away. Uh, while Fast Track is very user friendly, uh, uh, while Fast Track is very user friendly, it's also very powerful. It uh, allows you to store all your project data in one centralized place, then effectively present that data to others, whether they be coworkers, clients, potential clients, etc. So now that we've gone through that, let's go ahead and jump on into the program. Um, and the first file we're going to be working with today just to go over some of the main features in the program is actually an example file that's built into the demo version and the full version of the software. Now when you open up Fast Track, you will have the option of choosing from a blank new schedule, opening up a pre-existing schedule that you've worked on before, or, or opening up a schedule from templates. You can find that this file in the example section, once again called multiple homes. I'm going to start off with the three main views of Fast Track Schedule. Uh, we're looking at right now is called the Schedule View. Uh, this is probably uh, where you're going to be spending most of your time in the program, uh, setting up things like your activity list, working with your Gantt chart, entering information into your data columns, um, as well as doing most of your reporting. Now, the first thing you'll notice on the far left of the Schedule View is our first column and probably our more, most important column. It's called the Activity Name column. This is where you're going to be creating the task list in your project or projects. Um, as you can see, our overall project name is Lot 322 Cranes House. And then these first couple tasks are actually indented over underneath that overall project name. Uh, we have draw number one, accept lot, stake lines, and grades, etc. Now, as soon as we get down to foundation and backfill, you'll see that we actually have an additional indentation, uh, creating a separate phase of foundation and backfill. And we have a couple subtasks like footings inspection, footings, slab on grade, and walls. Now we'll go over a little bit more about how to set up these different outline levels and set up these different indentations where we're building out a schedule from scratch. Uh, but I just want to point out now that Fast Track really can be as complicated or as simple as you need. Um, if you want to use a task list that just goes straight down, you can do that. Um, you can also continue to indent and create these different phases, tasks, and subtasks in your project. Um, and I believe you can actually indent up to 64 times. Um, so you can take the most complex schedule or the simplest schedule um, and put it into Fast Track. Now to the right of our activity name column, you'll see our Gantt chart. And if you've worked with other project management software in the past, uh, you're probably pretty familiar with the Gantt tool. Uh, we like to think the Gantt chart in Fast Track is quite a bit more useful, uh, definitely quite a bit more custom customizable than it is in other programs. Right off, the, right off the bat, you'll notice that we have a couple different bar styles um, and bar colors built into our schedule. Um, in this file, those are actually linked up with the different phases at the beginning of our project. Uh, so you'll notice we have one bar style up here between draw number one and draw number two, uh, different from draw number two to draw number three, and so on. You'll also notice that we've put milestones into our schedule. Now, if you have points of time in your schedule that you want to mark off when things need to be completed or when you need to meet, et cetera, uh, you can put milestones in for them. Um, in Fast Track, you can use a bunch of different options for these milestones. Uh, you can use something as simple as a square, diamond, or circle shape. 
uh, to something a little bit more complex like a dollar sign, like the draws in this schedule, all the way into actually inserting in your own images to use as milestones. So if you have something like a company logo or something like that, um, you can put them in and use them as your milestones to spruce up your schedule. You can also put text boxes directly into the Gantt chart. Um, so if you have a delay or other marker in your schedule that you want to point out to other people viewing it, or for your own reference, you can actually create a text box right here. Um, you can also use these handy arrow keys uh, to have the text box point to the specific parts of the project that it applies to. You can also create bar labels in your schedule. Um, so if you want to show something like the resources working on a task, uh, the task name, start or finish date, uh, really whatever column information you want to display next to that bar, uh, you can set up. You can also set up that information to show on the bar, above the bar, below the bar, left and right of the bar, uh, wherever you want, uh, depending on how you want your schedule to look. Now, finally, you can put uh, images directly into your Gantt chart as well. So if you have something like uh, the fit, a picture of the finished product, you can put it in here. You can even use something like a company logo or pictures of the project in progress. Uh, whatever you want, you can put directly into this Gantt chart, once again, for your own reference, or especially for when you're going to be sprucing it up to present off to others. Now, just quickly, I'm going to flip to another example file that's included in the demo and the full version of the software, just to show you what another Gantt chart can look like in Fast Track. Uh, this schedule is called Orbital Earth Space Station. Here you'll see it's a little bit simpler Gantt chart. It really just has that one bar style um, and two different bar colors. Now, things I want to point, uh, point at in here um, are one, you don't actually have to put images directly into the Gantt chart. You can also create a special image column and link those images up with specific tasks in your project. I also want to show you here an example of inserting your own image for a milestone. In this file, you'll see that we actually have the company logo inserted in for this milestone here. Now flipping back to our original multiple home schedule, move on from the Gantt chart. Um, and to the right of the Gantt chart, you'll see the beginnings of some of our data columns. In Fast Track, you're going to have a lot of pre-built out uh, information columns uh, that we assume most project managers are going to use. Things like duration in days, the revised duration in days, your original estimate and revised estimate columns. Uh, now we'll have a long list of columns that you can choose from to insert in your schedule. And I'll go over a little bit more about how to do that when we're building out a schedule from scratch. Uh, but I also want you to know that in Fast Track, we have a lot of unspecified text, number, and calculation columns. So if you have a you know, subset of information or type of information that you want to keep track of that we didn't account for, you can use one of those um, unset up columns uh, to format for your specific needs. And the last thing I want to go over in the schedule view for now are something called summary graphs. Summary graphs will be placed at the bottom of your Gantt chart, and we'll take the data from your information columns and put them in either a bar or line graph format. Uh, once again, this can be used for your own reference or it can be used uh, when you're presenting it to others. Now, moving on from the schedule view, we'll move to the second view of Fast Track Schedule called the calendar view. Calendar view will essentially take the bars and tasks that you put in your schedule view and put them on traditional calendar. As you can see, it will also bring across the different bar colors, so you'll still see those different phases of your project. And it'll also bring over the milestones as well. Now, you can do a lot of formatting in your calendar view. Um, I don't have a lot of time to go over that today. Uh, but you can do things like um, you know, changing, obviously, the range of your calendar, uh, making these boxes bigger or smaller, changing the amount of work breakdown structure you want to show on the bars or milestones, um, a lot of different things like that, and also change the, the fonts in your um, uh, tasks as well. One thing else I'll mention real quick is that Fast Track does sync with iCal, Google Calendars, and Outlook. Um, so if those are something that you use and would like to set up alerts for on your phone or tablet or even on your computer, uh, you can actually export Fast Track files in the ICS format, take them over to there, and use those to set up. Now, the third view of Fast Track schedule is called the resource view. Uh, the resource view will allow you to keep track of a ton of different resources, whether they be contractors, subcontractors, in house personnel, uh, materials, equipment. The resource view will also show you um, a couple different important things about your resources, including all the tasks that they're going to be working at across the project, as well as their hourly work usage and percent work usage. And this really comes in handy when you're trying to spot over allocations in your schedule. So just looking at our first resource, you see Bob's excavation here. 
is working pretty normal days for this week and the beginning of this week. Um, they're working 100% of our day or eight hours in our um, default eight hour workday. But as soon as we get here, I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see. Oops. See, once we get to here to the Wednesday, the 17th, I will see that now Bob's excavation is assigned to 200% of the work in a day or 16 hours in our default work day. What this resource view will allow you to do is flip quickly through, spot these over allocations, and then fix them as needed so you don't have any of your resources biting off more than they can chew. One more thing I'll show you about the resource view is something called our resource information tab. Here you can enter in a lot of different information about each resource, uh, whether that be their, their name, their company name, their company address, their email address, phone number, uh, the category of resource. Um, probably the most important information you put in this resource information tab um, is the cost associated with that resource. So if they have a per use cost, a standard rate, or an overtime rate, you can put those in and then once you assign the resource to the task in your project, Fast Track will automatically calculate uh, the cost associated with each resource. Those are the three main views in Fast Track Schedule. But we do have one more view that we like to call our fourth quote unquote supplemental view, and that's print preview. Print preview will be the last step um, before actually exporting your schedule, whether it be as a PDF or an image file or printing it off and giving it to others. Um, it'll allow you to do a lot of sprucing up of your schedule and kind of see exactly what it's going to look like before you send it off. It'll also give you the option of putting in things like legends. So if you want to show the different bar styles and different bar colors in your schedule, uh, you can use legends for that. You can also put in headers on your schedules. So if you have something like a company name, uh, schedule name, company logo, company slogan, you can put those in as well. And one more thing I'll note about print preview is that uh, we use the WYSIWYG, WYSIWYG format. So what you see is what you get. Um, so this will... I know this isn't the best view of it right now because we are zoomed out a little bit, um, but really it'll allow you to see exactly what your schedule is going to look like before you print it off. So those are the four main, three or four main views of Fast Track Schedule. So now let's go and flip to a blank schedule, go through some of the fundamentals of building out a schedule from scratch. So for this example file, um, we'll just go ahead and use the example of building a house once again. So we'll call our overall project name house A. Then to go down to our next row, all we need to do is press the return or enter key. Then we're going to want to indent this, these tasks to show that they're under our overall project name. So to do that, we'll press either the tab key or use our handy arrow keys up here to indent. Let's go ahead and create a simple task list to go with this project. Uh, we'll do foundations, walls, roof, interior. Then let's create a, a different, uh, another outline level or a different phase underneath that interior by pressing the tab key once again. We'll put electrical and plumbing. Now, once we have our task list set up, uh, we need to put these tasks onto our Gantt chart and give them things like duration and start and finish dates. So to do that, uh, there's a couple different ways that you can accomplish it. Uh, probably the easiest way is by simply entering in a duration for your task. That will automatically put a four day bar onto our Gantt chart starting at our project start date. I just wanna note now that you can actually set up your project start date for any day you want. Um, in this example, I'm just using uh, the date of today, but if you're planning, planning a project, it's going to be happening in a couple weeks, a couple months, or even a couple years. Uh, you can set up that project start date and everything will build off of that. Now, another way to put these bars onto the Gantt chart is actually choosing start and finish dates for each task. Finally, Fast Track is also a drawing tool. So if you'd like, you can actually just go in and draw the bars directly onto the Gantt chart. Now that we have our, all our tasks put onto our Gantt chart, we see right now they are all starting on our project start date. Um, and in a perfect world, we'd be able to start, you know, build, start building all of these things at the same time and get this house done in a couple of weeks. Um, but with most projects, you're not going to be able to 
uh, start one task until the task before it has been completed. Um, and in this case, we're not going to start building the walls until the foundations are complete. Uh, we're definitely not going to start working on the interior until we have a roof over our heads. So what we're going to have to do is create some links and dependencies in our schedule. Once again, there's a couple different ways you can set up these dependencies in Fast Track Schedule. Uh, probably the easiest way is by simply highlighting all the bars on the Gantt chart or highlighting all the rows that you want to link. And then you can use these hand, this handy link tool up here in your toolbar. And that will link all tasks finished to start. Another way to set up these links is by going to our bar information tab, either by clicking in this information box to the left of our activity name column, or simply double clicking on the bars. In our bar information tab, we're gonna see a lot of different information and we'll go over a little bit more about this later. Um, but right now we're gonna to flip to our link section. And here you'll see that the predecessors and successors for each task are listed out. Um, you can also set them up here. So if you wanna click in the blank activity name section, you'll get a drop down menu of all the tasks in your schedule and you can choose which ones you wanna set up links with. You'll also see a little bit more information about each link, including the type and the lag lead and the link duration. Now, if we wanna do a little formatting for these links, all we have to do is double clicking on each link. Here we can change that information I just showed you in our bar information tab. So let's say we need an, an extra day after the foundations are complete to let the cement dry before we start our walls. All we have to do is put in a lag time of one day, put that in, and now we'll keep that day consistent across our project and we won't be able to start those walls until the day after the foundations are complete. You can also change the link type. Now the default link type is finish to start, but if you have two tasks like electrical and plumbing here that you want to have start, uh, uh, start on the same day, we can change the link type to start to start and those will now begin on the same day. So now that we have all these links and dependencies set up in our schedule, uh, this is really where Fast Track Schedule is going to become alive. Um, it'll allow you to move one task, and all the other tasks that are connected to that, that activity are going to be moved as well. So let's say that our walls task is going to get moved through the weekend and is actually going to start a couple days late. As soon as we move that task, all other tasks behind it will get be moved back as well. You also notice that these pink revised bars are gonna get set up. Um, so you can see the difference between your original schedule dates and durations and your new revised dates and durations. Now those are our scheduled and revised dates, but Fast Track will also allow you to keep track of the actual dates um, and durations in your project. To do this, all you have to do is double click on the bar to go to our bar information tab. Here you can see your original schedule and revised dates and durations. Um, you can also enter in the actual dates and durations. So if you want to say that the foundations did indeed take four days to complete, we put in an actual duration of four days. And now this bar will turn uh, completely green showing that task is now complete. You can also indicate if a task is a percentage complete. So if the walls are now half done, we can choose and uh, put in a percent completion of 50%. And now half that bar will turn green showing that only half of the task has been completed. Go over a little bit more about how to actually track your project as it goes along when we get to the reporting features. Uh, but now I wanna move on to one more thing in the schedule view, um, and that's inserting and hiding columns in your project. Now we've so far only been working with uh, these default columns that are gonna appear when you open up the program. Uh, but once again, there are a, a lot of different columns that are preset in Fast Track and a lot of columns that you can format for your own needs. So to enter these columns, we, all we need to go is to is the in, insert tab up at the top, choose column. And here's that long list of columns that I've mentioned several times. As you can see, we have a lot of preset ones like activity row ID, activity row number, actual duration and days, etc. We also have these unspecified calculation number and text columns that you can use for your own needs. And as you can see, there are a ton of each of them. So you uh, don't think you'll ever run out of columns that you can use. In this case, we'll just go ahead and pick the first column available to us, our percent complete column. As you can see, when we put that column in, it's automatically gonna take the information we just entered in our bar information tab and put it into the column. Now in the same way we did in our bar information tab, if we simply enter in a number here, that will go ahead and apply to our Gantt chart. So by putting in 25% complete, now only a fourth of that task has turned green. 
Now, when we're done with this column, all we have to do to hide it, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so it looks a little better first. All we have to do to hide it is either right click on the task or on the column and choose hide. And that will go away. Now, if we wanna bring that column back, all we have to do is right click up at the top once again, choose unhide, choose that column from our available column section. And that now will appear again um, with all the information intact. So that's about all I want to go over in the schedule view for now. So let's go ahead and flip through to our resource view and add a couple resources to our project. I'll just go ahead and use a couple simple resource names. Once we have these resource names added in, once again, you can always go to your resource information tab and enter an information for them. We'll go ahead and skip that because we already uh, saw that in our uh, example file. So once these resources are created, we'll go ahead and flip back to our uh, schedule view and go ahead and assign these tasks to the different, um, or uh, excuse me, assign the resources to the tasks in our project. Once again, there are a couple different ways you can do that. One way is by double clicking on the bar to get to our bar information tab again. Go to the assignment section and choosing from a drop down menu of all the resources available. Here you'll also see that information about um, the different costs associated with each resource. And if we had those things put in for these resources, you'd see the total cost for the task here. Another way, actually probably the easiest way to do this is by inserting our resources assign column and choosing from that same drop down menu. Now that we have all our resources assigned to our tasks, let me flip back to a resource view and open these up. You'll see now that information is displayed. One thing I didn't mention before when you're looking at the example files resource view is that this will also carry over um, the revised bars and the actual durations uh, that we put in our schedule view. So you can see those as they progress as well. So that's about all I want to go over um, in terms of building out a schedule from scratch. Um, so let's spend the last five or so minutes and go over some reporting features that are built into Fast Track Schedule. And to do that, we're actually going to work with that uh, multiple homes example file we we're using at the beginning. And the first reporting feature I'll go over is, our, is actually called layouts. Um, we've worked a little bit with inserting and hiding columns in our schedule. But as you're working through different subsets of data and cleaning up your schedule and presenting it to others, um, you're gonna want different, different groups of columns, different groups of summary graphs, uh, different sections of your Gantt chart to show. And that's where layouts are gonna come in handy. So there are, like columns, there are a bunch of layouts built directly into Fast Track Schedule. Um, as you can see, uh, we have a bunch listed down here. And to show you how layouts will work, we'll go ahead and choose uh, just the most basic layout available which will just include our activity name column and our Gantt chart. This will be really useful if you just want to show your schedule to somebody uh, that wants to see a bird's eye view and just really a task list and that timeline graph. Now let's say you had somebody that was really interested in the uh, tracking things as it goes along in your project. We can choose our tracking actuals layout. And now we'll have a bunch of our actual columns uh, presented that we can put our information in and track it as it goes along. One more example of a layout is our cost layout. That will include a couple more cost columns as well as some summary graphs that are set up specifically for these costs. So once you enter in things like fixed costs and resource costs, it'll go ahead and calculate total cost for the project and total cost per resource. You can also create your own layouts in Fast Track. So if you go to layouts and define and new, here you can create, uh, actually insert any columns and summary graphs that you want to show in your schedule. So I'll just pick a couple just for the sake of example. Once you press OK and apply, now only those columns and those parts of the timeline graph will be showing. Once you've created this layout, it will always appear up in your custom layout section so you can use it over and over again. Now, kind of the same vein as layouts is another reporting feature in Fast Track called filters. Uh, filters will search through all the data in your information column and find specific data depending on a certain criteria. 
So once again, there are a bunch of filters built into the program. So if you'd like to see all the tasks that are happening on the current day, the current week, uh, the next day, the next week, all your critical items, things that are 0.99% complete, things that are 100% complete, you can run filters for all of those. You can also create your own custom filters. And I don't have time today to go over actually how to build out those fil filters from scratch, but there are a couple custom filters built in this example file. Um, probably the most useful way, at least I use and a lot of our customers I speak with use these custom filters is to filter out your data by resource. So if you'd like to create a report for each of your resources and just show them exactly what they need to worry about, you can run a filter for that. Like here we ran a filter for Bob's excavation. Now we see only the tasks and the parts of the timeline graph that apply to Bob's excavation. So it'd be nice if you can send this over to them in the schedule uh, view format or in the traditional calendar view. So they can just see what they need to work on each day and they're not gonna be worrying about all the other things in your project. Now, once you're done with the filter, all you have to do to go back to the unfiltered state is press the restore all button in your bottom left and you're back to normal. Now, the final feature in Fast Track I wanna go over today is uh, probably one of the most powerful features we offer with Fast Track Schedule. Um, in this file I've shown you, we actually have a couple different projects built in, a couple different lots, that's why it's called multiple homes. So you have the option of always, you know, just including a couple projects in one file. Um, but a lot of our customers and a lot of people I work with uh, would like to have segregated files for each project uh, because maybe they have different project managers working on them or they just want to keep them separated. But they also want to have a master file showing everything together at once so they can get that bird's eye view of all the projects that are going on in the company. Now that's where consolidation is going to come in handy. So let's say we have a couple different, one second, let me fix this real quick. Say we have two different consulting teams working in our company, working on two different files. So we have the schedule for consulting team one, and we have the schedule for consulting team two. Now we wanna keep these files segregated so they're only seeing what they need to work on. Uh, but as a supervisor, I also want to see them together, see how both are progressing, see things like shared resource pools, um, see where everybody is at any time, and see the health of each of these projects. So that's where consolidation is going to come in handy. So to create consolidation, we're going to create a blank new file to serve as our master file. Then we'll go to our Tools tab, choose Define, Add. Here we'll choose whatever files we want to add in. Press update all, close, do this so we can see. Now we have both of our projects in this master file. As you can see, they're running alongside one another. We can see all that information that we wanted to see uh, that we couldn't you know, compare to uh, each file in their segregated files. Now, once this master file is created, you're not gonna have to recreate it every single time uh, that you wanna see the progress of these different projects and the progress in your company. Let's say that we have a delay in consulting team one. Once that delay is added in, we press the save button. All we have to do to bring that change into our master file is go to consolidation, get updates, and that will now come in. Uh, so a lot of our customers, a lot of people I work with uh, will save a master file just in a file on the computer. Uh, they can update a couple times a day and really just see how the company is progressing across all the different projects. So that's about all I want to go over today. Uh, I know it was a brisk walkthrough and I thank you for, for bearing with us, but we had a lot we wanted to go over in this short amount of time. Uh, so what I'll do now just to close up is put up my contact information. Um, so once again, I know this was fast. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me on my direct line at 800-450-1981, extension 3013. Or you can always shoot me over an email with any questions or concerns to rmoffett, M-O-F-F, E T T at aecsoftware.com. So thanks again for watching the video. And once again, please feel free to contact me or anybody else at AEC Software if there's anything we can help you with as you're trying out and working with the software.